guys we're back with another session of Damon's life on Google developers today we're gonna have an office hour style session we got a lot of questions on moderator and uh, in the groups so we're gonna try to answer as many as we can uh, but first let's start with a few announcements what's going on behind <laughs> a lot of stuff is going on uh, last week we told you about uh, uh, Google Dev Fest or uh, the West Coast edition is going to happen this weekend and uh, I'm going to switch now to the screen if you guys signed up great uh, unfortunately it looks like we are sold out for the Saturday and Sunday events um, oh I'm sold out what's going on what, what can you tell a little bit more about Dev Fest and what we're trying to accomplish it, it's it's going to be uh, very cool this weekend we have a lot of talks on uh, wallet. Uh, we have talks uh, on various Chrome APIs, um, code labs. So if you signed up, you're really going to enjoy it. And of course, there's going to be a party. Nice. So that's, <laughs> that's, party, so. that's what I'm looking <laughs> that's forward to. I think people are just coming for the parties. The code labs. Uh, I'm yeah. just kidding. It's a great way to <laughs> great way to learn about learn more about uh, different technical aspects. Okay. Oh, so, so we'll let's fix make that. Make sure you're fully mirroring before we continue. Okay. Let's take a second out. So, how does it look? Well, what we could do is take the thing that's mirroring and try again. Or is it oh, mirroring? So we're seeing your Seagear background. We're not seeing the rest of it. Oh, it's not mirroring. It's yeah. doing it's not. the. It's no, just, it's, I think it. Do you have the mirror up here? Just say, for everyone who's listening, we're going to. How about now? Okay. Is, it, is it working? Okay, so let's keep going. N slight, slight uh, technical delay here. Technical it difficulties. It technical happens difficulties. when you're live, uh, <laughs> but now we're good. So um, I was just talking about uh, the DevFest West. We're sold out, but for those who signed up, we are looking forward to see you guys. And the other announcement we keep on mentioning every time, uh, but we love people who are passionate about APIs and we're hiring in the developer relations team, in the wallet uh, team as well. So if you're interested, you wanna play with the latest and greatest, uh, check out the developer relations jobs page and apply for uh, advocates, uh, program engineers, program managers, wherever you feel you can make the most impact. Yep, and the, the URL is developers.google.com slash jobs. Um, if we're really looking for a few new folks to help out, so please apply if you're interested. Cool. Let's move on to the questions. Lots of them, very little time. Yeah. So you want to take the first one? I will take the first question. Uh, and the first question is, uh, it's related to uh, right now Google Wallet for digital goods. It's, how do I verify that the JSON web token I create is correct? And uh, first, let's talk about what a JSON web token is. It's a method to kind of... Uh, ensure that content you send over to the client's browser hasn't been altered when you go through a purchase. So the way that we do it is we kind of append a signature to the end of body content, right? So JSON, a JSON web token consists of three things. Uh, a base64 encoded header app appended to a content body, appended to a signature, all concatenated with periods. So in, in order to ensure that the JSON web token you create is correct, what you can do is you can take the content between the two periods and then base64 decode it and then take a look at that J JavaScript object. Um, you can also use our JSON web token decoder. Yeah, I'm going to put it up on the screen right now so you guys can see it. It's yep. on, on the documentation, on the resources tools. Very useful tool. It, it, so you can, for with this tool, you can just copy and paste the entire JSON web token that you've created, and then this tool will decode the main body using the technique I described earlier. Um, it does some additional things like HTML encoding or HTML decoding. Uh, so if your slashes or something are incorrect, it'll automatically correct that for you, which isn't the best. Um, but there are caveats to it, but if you really want to um, ensure that the content is correct. What you can do is you can open up the developer tools in Chrome and then go to the console and use ATOB, which will convert your base64 string to 
just a regular string. Cool. So the next question, I'm going to take the next one, looks like it's somewhat related uh, also for the Digital Goods API. And the question is, I get the following error message on an in-app payment request. And the message is, we could not complete your purchase because of a technical issues. How do I figure out the problem? So the first thing you do when you get something like that, you check the error codes that you receive uh, in the client failure handler. So that's a client side handler which will be called uh, when uh, the payment fails, the transactions fails for whatever reason. And I'm going to put up on the screen again uh, the reference to those error codes. So if you watch the screen now, you will see that we have four error codes in the error type field uh, that will give you an indication of what went wrong. So the first three are the most important ones that you should look like. Uh, for example, merchant error will tell you that the purchase request contains an error. For example, a badly formatted JWT that my colleague uh, talked about earlier. You can use the decoder, see if uh, one of the field is an incorrect format, fix that and move on. Uh, the other two are purchase canceled. The Either the buyer uh, canceled the purchase or there is a payment declined error. Uh, not much you can do there, but it's a good indication where the problem is coming from. And the third one is postback error, which means you fail to acknowledge the postback notification sent to your server. You have 10 seconds to do that, otherwise the transaction is automatically cancelled. So check that you receive the postback notification, look at your logs and make sure you uh, respond in 10 seconds. And finally the last one is internal server error. Uh, it can happen, it seems it means something went wrong. On Google side, if you see that, uh, let us know in the forum uh, and we'll uh, help you debug that or check if there's something wrong on our side. Yep. Cool. So I'll take the next one. Um, it's a question from a forum about recurring subscriptions. Uh, when are, When is the subscription first and second payment charged? I'm confused at the uh, I'm confused about the phrase you'll be charged at the end of the billing period starting on. Yeah, so I guess we want to take a little bit of time to clarify the billing cycle for recurring billing. Um, the first subscription payment starts on the start date that you set in the recurring item in the JSON Web Token. So the initial, well, depending on how you you schedule your your uh, how you create your recurring. Uh, your recurring item and your initial payment inside the JSON Web Token. The first payment is taken at the time the customer purchases, which is that initial payment segment, and then the recurring billing starts at the start date that you set within your recurring item. So those are the two differentiations. Uh, the second payment will occur one month after the start date, exactly one month after the start date, and so on and so forth. Yeah, so it's a little confusing statement, uh, and I think we're working on making it better. Yeah. And because uh, there are a lot of technical terms there, and probably it's not the best. Yeah. Subscriptions are a confusing thing. So. All right, I'll take the next question. Uh, it's related to Google Wallet Mobile. So we're switching gears a little bit here. And the question is Does Google Wallet Mobile require an internet connection to authorize a payment at an NFC reader? And the answer is no, it does not require an internet connection. It will work 100% without a data connection. And this is a big misconception that you'll always need to be online, uh, either wireless or on, the, on your carrier network, so you, so you can make a payment. It is not required. All the phone is doing is transmitting your card information to the reader, and then the reader processing the, is processing the entire transaction. So all you have to do is enable your phone, tap, and you're good to go. Yep. Simple. Very simple. Yeah. OK, I'll take the next one. Uh, I would like the ability for users to purchase physical goods with Google Wallet inside my app. Uh, the in-app purchase API cannot be used for this purpose, and it is restricted to digital goods. What API should I use? So right now for. I'm guessing they're talking about web applications and not Android uh, applications? Or what, what do you think, Mihai? Uh, yeah, let's see. So it looks like he's mentioning 
It could be either an Android web application or an Android application. In either case, physical goods are not supported uh, at this time uh, on mobile apps. You could use the checkout API. Right now, that's your only option. Uh, but the, that is only available to merchants in the United States and the United Kingdom. So there's yeah. a big limitation right there. Uh, the good news is that we are working on uh, uh, expanding the current digital goods API yeah. to support uh, physical items. So that will come and it will also be available in more countries. There, there's a few different uh, a like payment method APIs that we're currently working on. And then these are geared towards uh, physical goods for mobile or for the web. All right, um, should I take the next one or do you? Uh, want to I take can the take the next one. one. Okay. So the next one, also related to Google Wallet Mobile, the question is if I lose my phone, how can I prevent my Google Wallet Mobile from being used to make payments? What other security components are part of Google Wallet Mobile? So it's a very good question and a question that comes up regularly. Uh, there are lots of protection layers to prevent un unauthorized use. First, you have two layers of passwords. The first one is your Android uh, screen lock. You have to turn on your screen in order to uh, enable any NFC type of payment. And then, uh, unlike uh, leather wallets, you have an extra four-digit uh, Google Wallet pin that prevents unauthorized access. So that's the first layer. The second layer, if you ever get uh, if your wallet ever gets lost, your phone wallet ever gets lost or stolen, you can remotely disable it. Uh, and that will prevent any unauthorized use. Your credit cards will continue to work normally. It's just your phone is uh, completely disabled right now. Uh, and other security enhancements, uh, we can mention encryption. The debit and credit cards you store are stored securely online in the cloud they're not even on the phone on the phone you use a virtual card so your credit card numbers are not even passed to the merchant so there are lots of layers that prevent any type of unauthorized use yep all right um i guess the next one i'll take you take next one <laughs> what advantages does google uh, wallet mobile have over making a payment by swiping a credit card um i think there are a few different advantages uh one is simplicity, I suppose. Uh, what happens when you tap to pay is that multiple things are transmitted, right? So uh, for merchants who accept it, we'll also transmit things like loyalty cards, offers, and then possibly any clipped coupons that you've had you stored. Um, wallet also, well, we hope that Wallet will in the future enable you to store more things within the wallet. So like we were talking about previously on one of our um, Google developer live sessions is that the idea of storing maybe your transit card in the wallet or something like that tickets and so on and so forth so it's we hope that it's a thing of convergence and it simplifies uh, the, the user's life uh, in addition in addition to that it's pretty convenient right so uh, instead of carrying maybe your loyalty cards, your credit cards, your gift cards, your um, whatever else that you may store in the wallet, you can all have it digitally represented within the phone. And it's much more, uh, I mean, the space isn't as large of a concern because everything is digital. So, and the last thing is security. Yeah. Um, as Mihai previously mentioned, mentioned it, yeah. it's much more secure than your physical device. Yeah, and less worries if you lose it. Yeah. Cool. Next question. Can you demonstrate using a phone to make a uh, Google Wallet mobile payment at an NFC reader? We don't have an NFC reader here, but we can no. demo. We can. We have lots of videos YouTube. that show it how it's <laughs> done. So I'm going to switch uh, to my computer now again, and I'm going to launch a video here. I don't know if HDMI gets the audio out, with Google but Wallet, well. you can pay with your phone at hundreds of thousands of merchants with any card you want. To get started, select your card. Pick a card. Visa, MasterCard, any or card. Discover, credit or debit. <laughs> if you don't see the card you want, it's a snap to add another one. All your payment info is encrypted, 
and stored securely in your Google account online. And with Google offers that automatically sync to your phone, saving is simple. Yes, coupons. Let's say you're buying a smoothie. Just tap the back of your phone on the terminal. And that's it. A confirmation screen will let you know you're good to go. Enjoy your blended beverage. Cool. cool. Wasn't that great? Tap and pay and then enjoy your smoothie. It's the future. Yes. And uh, <laughs> you guys see the page I just put up. Uh, it's very useful. If you go browse it, you can see lots of uh, merchants that are accepting uh, Google Wallet. And if you want to try it, just go ahead and go to one of these merchants, buy something you like. Yeah. Um, I'll take the next question. How are payments via Google Wallet processed? Would a bank charge me a fee for using it? So the way that Google Wallet works right now is, as Google, as Mihai mentioned, that uh, Google provides a one-time card for the merchant to process. It's a one-time, uh, it's a prepaid master debit card, MasterCard debit card, I believe. Uh, so that when the merchant processes it, they just go through their typical merchant processor or merchant gateway. Uh, so as a user, you incur no fees, and as a merchant, you would uh, pay the typical fees that you do to your credit card processor. And if I can add a lot of questions on security or related to uh, what's just been asked right now about mm -hmm. fees, can the answers can be found in our FAQ page. I'm going to put up again the page so everyone can see it. It's one click away, uh, google.com slash wallet slash faq.html and lots of uh, good answers to most frequently asked questions. So if yep. we didn't answer something on this session or not uh, to your satisfaction, please go check out the FAQ page. And with that said, let me move on to the next question. Oh, it's an easy one. How do I know if a payment terminal will accept Google Wallet Mobile? <laughs> so very simple. I'm going to put the page up again. Look for the um, PayPass sign. You can see it right there. Yep. In, uh, so we're using yeah. the same communication protocol that your credit card uses, that your MasterCards yeah. use, PayPass. So if you see the PayPass sign, you can tap your phone and pay. Yep. Uh, I guess I'll take the next one. Mm -hmm. Can I attach a debit card to my Google Wallet mobile? Um, yes. Now, because we're using um, now, because we're aliasing the credit card and providing a one-time card to the merchant, you can actually add any type of card to your Google Wallet and use it at any store that accepts uh, that can accept payments through PayPass. Um, so you can add debit cards, you can add uh, Discover, you can add MasterCards, anything that is in your wallet as a method of payment, or I would say not anything, but most things that are in your wallet as a method of payment, you can likely add to Google Wallet. Just try. Most likely it will work. Yeah. Yeah. You just saw the demo video before. It had a, had a credit card or debit card screen. Just try, see what works. On top of that, if I can add, you are um, able to add your gift cards yeah. to the phone. Uh -huh. So that's great. Uh, Macy's, Bloomingdale's, you know, you name it. You get a gift card, put it on the phone. It will be there. You're not going to lose it. A few gift card yeah. partners, yeah. some stored value. And uh, very convenient. Okay, let me take the next one. Uh, another uh, security and risk question. Is any information stored at risk? How is the user protected? So I think we covered it in a previous question. Yeah. To recap, um, linked credit or debit card credentials are not locally stored on the phone. They're in the cloud. The merchant will not get your information. If your phone is lost or stolen, there is no um, fear that your information is compromised. You can remotely disable it, all kinds of security layers that uh, protect you. Yeah. Uh, I guess I got the next Take one. The next one? Yeah. <laughs> so, does Google Wallet Mobile work on a Nexus 7? Uh, and the answer to that is yes, it should be working on so Nexus 7. Resounding yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would hope that it works on our it own device. It works. Uh, it works on all devices. <laughs> Yeah, so there's there's an FAQ that, do you want to show the FAQ of the list of devices that Wallet is supported on? 
Um, oh. And if we can bring that up. Let's see. It should. So if you can see my screen, then actually I think we go to the help center, which is at the bottom of the page. Uh -huh. And in the help center, we are. It should be eligible devices. So you see here on the left side at the bottom of the navigation sidebar, we click on eligible devices. And it's in there, the Nexus 7 tablet. Nice. Yeah, I think Good. it was available the moment the tablet shipped. And to come back to a previous question, note that the tablet is Wi-Fi only. You don't even need Wi-Fi to make a payment, as we said. Yep. Any this Google Wallet payment do not require uh, any connectivity. So I think you are somewhat related to this aspect. So just take your Nexus 7 out there and buy stuff. Cool. And yeah, this is this is the list of devices uh, currently supported. I, I think you you get the next question. I'll get the next question. So oh, actually, let me see. We have quite a few questions about international availability, and we get them every session. Uh, <laughs> and the answer is invariably um, we cannot make any uh, firm announcements at this time. Uh, but we can point you to the Google uh, newly launched Google Wallet page on Google+. Plus. It has a lot of timely announcements and a lot of discussion on these topics. Uh, they're much more frequent uh, than our bi-weekly session. So please check it out. And that's the first place you're going to hear about uh, new launches uh, and availability. Yep. Social media is taking over. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I guess I'll take the next one. Does a transaction using Google Wallet Mobile look any different than a transaction than a credit card swipe to the cashier? Um, well, other than going up to the pay, to the PayPass terminal and then tapping your phone, the, the transaction should look identical in the, t in the sense that the if you were to take a credit card and tap it, the credit card would transmit its own the the PAN, the AX number or the account number to the terminal and then you would be able to process it normally like that. The phone is doing the same thing. So it's riding the same payment rails and to a cashier, it should look like the same flow. They may be a little surprised. Yeah, I was like, what's that it's phone? It's magic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Can you do that again? Can you make a few more purchases? <laughs> yeah, did you really pay? <laughs> I'm not going to give your stuff. Um, so that's fun. I, I would say I experienced that with uh, merchants, and they were really amazed uh, of how uh, fast it was and how convenient. Yeah. And uh, yeah, go try it. Uh, I'm sure you'll have fun. Uh, I'm looking at a couple of questions which are somewhat related. Uh, the question is, how will a store handle a Google Wallet transaction if they require a signature? And the second one is if they require to see the card. So generally, stores are asking you to see the c card and the signature to make sure the card is signed, to make sure you sign with the same signature, uh, to double check that the card is not a duplicate or a compromised yeah. card. So none of this really applies when you make a payment uh, with a mobile device. Your card is already stored in there, it is saved in the cloud. Um, there is no reason if the transaction goes through for the merchant to check the physical card or the signature. So I think those are corner cases, uh, and probably the merchant is not educated. So Well, I mean, I think like before you can enter in a card, you have to enter in some identifying information associated with the yeah. card to ensure so that Google Wallet can ensure that the card belongs to you. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty minimal information, but I mean, it's, it's kind of like the know your consumer and make sure that it isn't, that's, it's not a stolen card that we're adding to our network. So the security check already happened. The merchant is protected yep. uh, and doesn't need to actually check your physical signature. Yep. All right, getting uh, closer to the end. Let's so do see. I, 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 should I take this last one? Yes, let's do that. All right. Um, does Google Wallet Mobile protect me against unauthorized payments the same way my credit card does? Um, because we're using your credit card as the back instrument, uh, you should receive the same protections. Uh, you, you would receive the protections that your credit card provides for you. Uh, we're simply putting an, an alias card in front of it, or we're t putting a one-time card in front of it that, that is backed by your card, uh, which means that all payments will eventually end up on your card. And we have, uh, we're working, or we have 
ties in place to ensure that this kind of stuff happens. So yes, you will be protected against unauthorized payments. So again, lots of good uh, answers to questions on yeah. the security, privacy, and merchants are in the FAQ section. Yep. So if something we didn't answer, please go check it out. All right, we got close to the end. Thank that? you, everyone, for submitting questions. That's uh, a reminder to, if you signed up for DevFest West, we'll see you this weekend. And yes. then be sure to check out developers.google.com slash jobs for information about our jobs availability. Uh, we hope to see you next time. All right. Bye-bye. See ya.